It was late when Jack arrived in Amsterdam. He took his bag from the overhead locker and smiled at the hosts as he disembarked the plane. He took the train into the city and walked to the nearest hotel. He smiled again at the woman behind the counter. I don't have a reservation, but I'd like to know if there's a room available for tonight. She smiled back and showed him a short price list. He looked it over briefly and pointed at a single room. This will be all I need. Thank you. And just for one night? Oh, yes, please. She gave him the brief rundown of the room, the minibar costs, checkout and breakfast times, all while loading his keycard. He waited until she was done before declining breakfast and took himself off to his room where he laid out his clothes for the next day and went to bed. In the morning he woke early as usual and following a long hot shower he sat at the little desk in the room. He pulled out a little pocket watch which he laid on the table and he waited. Hours passed as he sat there, not fidgeting or walking around, just waiting, his mind clear of all thoughts. Suddenly his watch struck a tone and he stood up quickly, grabbed his bag and left the room. He handed in the card at the front desk and headed into the city. It was the start of spring and although not especially warm, the sun was shining and it was pleasant. He didn't walk at any great speed or with any perceived purpose, but he knew exactly where he was going. He soon found himself at a pleasant cafe where he took a seat inside and ordered himself some coffee and again waited. As his coffee arrived, another man walked in looking a little rushed and tired. He looked down at Jack and for a moment stared enviously at his coffee. Jack smiled in reply and said, If you're in a rush, you're welcome to it. I have nothing more to do today, so have the time to wait for more. I beg your pardon? My coffee. It's only just arrived and you seem to be having a much busier day than I am. The man stared at him in shock and wasn't sure what to do, so Jack pushed the cup across the table towards him. Please, be my guest. Random acts of kindness are a hobby of mine, and I insist. It should be perfect drinking temperature, and there are some free tables outside. You can use the spare few moments you have for waiting for coffee to enjoy the sunshine. Still in shock, the man reached down and picked up the cup. That's incredibly kind of you, sir. Thank you very much. But, but please, can I at least pay for it? No, no, it's my gift to you. Just enjoy it. That will be repayment enough. The man didn't know what to do. He'd heard stories of strange things like this happening, but didn't fully believe they actually happened, least of all to him. He reached out a hand and Jack shook it. Then he went out and sat at a small table in the sun, sipped his coffee and smiled. Jack smiled to himself and ordered more coffee and a slice of cake. As his work was now done, he would enjoy the morning. When the man had finished the coffee, he popped his head back inside and thanked Jack again before hurrying back onto the street. Jack waved and smiled and watched him walk off. Once his own coffee and cake were finished, he paid the bill and left, walking off in the same direction as the man had gone. Later that afternoon, he caught the train back to the airport and a plane back home. In the morning, after a long hot shower, Jack slowly headed into town, stopping only to buy a newspaper from a stand outside the tallest building in the city. The man at the stand smiled and greeted him kindly, and Jack smiled in reply. He then walked into the building, and ignoring security, let himself in with a keycard, which he also used to unlock the building's private elevator. He rode it to the top floor, and as it opened, he found himself standing in a massive office. He walked past the bookshelves up to the main desk and handed the newspaper to the man sitting before sitting down himself. The man at the desk glanced at the headlines, which read, CEO suffers fatal heart attack while in Amsterdam. He let his eyes glance over the rest of the article, seeing that although authorities hadn't ruled out the possibility that drugs were involved, it was believed that it would have been an accident or something that had accelerated an undiagnosed condition. He put the paper down on the table and looked up at Jack, who smiled. How do you do it? Patience. The trick is patience. And look at you. You just killed a man who was on the verge of becoming one of the richest, most influential men alive, and nothing. You don't even look nervous or stressed or anything. Jack smiled again. I wouldn't be very good at my job if I did now, would I? Did you even lose sleep over it? Would it make you feel better if I did? I don't know. Maybe. It's just scary to think that even after all the work we've done together, I still feel like you'd come after me without any feeling. 
and yet you still freely accept items I hand you in an office with no cameras and such limited security access that it would take a week before anyone could get clearance to look for you here if you suddenly went missing. The man paled visibly as he looked down at the newspaper, and his hands began to shake violently. Jack smiled in reply and sighed. I think, actually, I will miss you. But, but, there are cameras in all the hallways and in the entrance that would have seen you come into this office. Jack smiled. There are supposed to be, but there aren't. But, but I saw you touch the same newspaper. I am immune. The man lunged for the phone on his desk, but seeing Jack not move made him even more scared. Scheduled maintenance on the phone lines this morning. No phone or internet for the next hour. He then pulled the cell phone from his pocket and stared at it with defeat in his eyes. Jack pulled a small device out of his own pocket. Disrupts mobile phone signals. How? You know I'm not sure. I think it creates a mirror signal that bounces satellite signals back. Not that! Oh, oh, you mean how did I manage to organize all these things for just this moment? It's like I said. Patience. The man looked at Jack for a few seconds, then looked past him at the elevator, then back at Jack, and started mapping how he might get past him and try and escape. Just then Jack's watch went off in his pocket, and the lights in the building shut off. Oh dear. It looks like the maintenance people have accidentally cut the power to the building. You really should have had an emergency stairwell installed on this floor. Tears ran down the man's face, and he felt a sharp pain suddenly grip his chest. I don't understand how you can do this, how you can make all these things happen in your favor, and how you can sit there and smile watching me die. You're not the first person to ask me that, and I can't imagine you'll be the last. Knowing won't make it any easier. In fact, the only thing that will is sweet tea or coffee. Something with caffeine in it, but unfortunately the backup generator is malfunctioning, so unless you have a thermos, you're out of luck. But it'll be painless. That I promise. The man stared on in horror at Jack, who just smiled back at him calmly, and his fear turned to rage, and he launched himself across the desk at him. Jack quickly stood and stepped out of the way. Now, now, there's no need for that. The man rolled and pulled a gun from his jacket and pointed it at Jack. Oh yeah? What's your great master plan for this? The man pulled the trigger and watched the bullets fly through Jack and hit the wall behind him. Jack looked down at where the holes should have been, then looked back at the man. For the first time he thought that Jack's smile seemed strange, too wide somehow. Slowly, as he stared, he became aware that Jack's face wasn't a face at all, but a skull, hidden beneath a black hood, and he suddenly wasn't as afraid as he had been.